Um, I had a chance um, to be here this morning to hear some of the other speakers, and so I tried to kind of absorb the message they were sharing with you, and uh, it caused me to put a couple of notes down. I, I was taught long ago, uh, tell people what you're going to tell them, and then tell them, and then remind them what you told them. And I want you to walk away informed, inspired, and driven to action. So the first thing I want to say to you that I got out of it is a famous quote based on our Secretary of Labor talking to us and several of the others is, ask not what your country can do for you, uh, but ask what you can do for your country. In the political environment we're in, I think that's a particular strong message. The other message came from when we began the lean journey and somebody said to me, we've been paying people for their hands for years and they would have given us their hearts and their heads for free if we had only known how to ask them. The good news that I'd like to share with you is the good news is no matter who is elected in the next month to be the most powerful person in the world, the good news is that the government is not going to make the world a better place, nor is the person elected. But we in this room can profoundly change the world as we know it. And it doesn't cost us anything other than our thoughts and our passion to care. So we're going to talk to you about truly human leadership. And truly human leadership in simple terms is a profound sense of responsibility for the lives of the people entrusted to you in your organization. I was interviewed once by a couple of organizational professors at Washington University. At the end of a two-hour uh, interview, they said to me, you know, you're the first CEO I've ever interviewed that didn't talk about his product in the entire interview. And I said, we've been talking about our product for the last two hours. It's our people. I will never go uh, on my last day um, proud of the machines we built. I'll be proud of the impact we made on this world. So the good news is that I hope all of you are here for the same purpose, that my sense is you are, that we all desperately want to use our gifts and talents and our positions to leave the world a better place than we found it. So that's the journey I'm going to take you on uh, in this. So Barry Waymiller used to stand for Mr. Barry, Mr. Waymiller, now stands for building a better world through business. And I want to walk you through this journey. What, what's the message? Leadership is the stewardship of the lives entrusted to us. That's it. First point I want you to watch. stewardship is the leadership is the stewardship of those precious lives that are entrusted to us. We must create value for all stakeholders, our community, our team members, our clients, our suppliers, our bankers. We have a lot of people that depend upon us. And the good news is all you have to do is care. That's the word I want you to walk away with. All you have to do is care. I happen to live in Aspen, Colorado, um, and, and get access to the uh, Aspen Institute Ideas Festival. And there was a New York Times op-ed columnist who sat standing before many of the large donors who, who genuinely are doing good in the world through contributing to the Aspen Ideas Festival and leadership in the world. He made this statement. While we continue to do good in the world, could we do less harm? What he meant was, how did you make the money that allowed you to write that check? And they didn't like it at all, OK? Because we tend to celebrate those people for their generosity to write the large checks. And what I'm going to talk to you about is the harm we do that gives us the capacity to write those checks. So I'm going to give you some startling statistics. We had some of our previous speaker talk about raising dignity in the world, giving people a chance to have a job, raising people out of poverty. My granddaughter just graduated from Aspen High School. There were 148 kids in that class, over half of them honor students. And I felt sorry for them. Most people were cheering them as they go out into the world. But look at these statistics. 88% of all people that work in this country 88% feel they work for an organization that does not care about them. These are your brothers, your sisters, your mothers, your fathers, your cousins, your neighbors. That is what is creating a lot of the anger and frustration in this country. We are doing that to them. Not the government, not their elected officials. We are doing that to them. And it's not just in business. It's in healthcare, it's in military, it's in education. It's, I speak in all facets of our country, 
And one of the worst is health care. One of the worst is health care. We are self-inflicting damage to our people. 74% of the illnesses in this, we complain about the cost of health care. We try to beat up the insurance companies and the hospitals to reduce cost. Who is the largest contributor to the cost of health care? Business. Because 74% of all illnesses are chronic. The biggest cause of chronic illness is stress. And the biggest cause of stress is work. Here's something we learned at least recently from somebody at the Mayo Clinic. The person you report to at work is more important to your health than your primary care physician. And there's a 20% increase in heart attacks on Monday mornings when people have to go back to work. Our workplaces are killing us, and these are our children, they're our friends, it's our country. And this is not an American issue. We operate all over the world. It is a universal issue in every facet of our economy. We are self-destructing because we have not been taught to care. So I'm going to walk you through this journey. I think, well, as Tony Schwartz says, the way we're working isn't working. We're hurting people. And we can change it. That's the good news. We have the cure. There's a statement I made about the Mayo Clinic, which gives validity to this effort. People in the world are suffering from leadership malpractice. Okay? That's the issue we face, leadership malpractice. You can't blame them because they were never taught to care. They were taught to use. And most of us want to bring children in this world and experience it ourselves. We want to experience happiness in the time we have on the face of this earth. And, and, and Gallup did a survey around the world and found the number one source of happiness in the world is a good job working with people you enjoy. And guess what? We deny to 88% of the people in this world. Guess what we deny to your children, to your family members? We are denying them a source of happiness that everybody wants. And the good news, again, we can change it because we can, ch in, right here in this room, this conscious capitalism movement, as Raj has articulated, it's much higher than the product you produce. The purpose is much higher. It is the stewardship of those precious lives that are entrusted to you. And again, we have the power to change it. I, I have an undergraduate in accounting, an MBA, uh, uh, Indiana, an undergraduate, Michigan graduate, and then I worked at Price Waterhouse. I reflect back on what I was taught to prove you want to be successful? It's money, power, and position. And let me help you do that. And I, creating shareholder value, not stakeholder value. I always viewed people as objects. I needed to hire people to get functions done. It was always for me and my success when I look back on it. And as I said, success is money, power, and position. I was never, ever taught that the way I would lead would affect the way people would live their lives. Never. Truly human leadership, actually, we called it people-centric leadership, and Simon Sinek came in and spent two days with us, and uh, he, he couldn't believe what he saw. He said, I'm no longer a nutty idealist. I've just seen what I imagined, a world where people love their job and go home each night safe, happy, and fulfilled. And it's about people, purpose, and performance in that sequence. It starts with the fundamental responsibility to the lives of the people that you're entrusted to you, around a purpose that inspires them to share their gifts fully, and then you have to create value. That is the three Ps of our leadership model. And it takes all three. Not two, all three. People, purpose, and performance. So let me walk you on this uh, a journey that we had. First, as Raj mentioned, uh, I inherited when I was, my dad died at 30, uh, $18 million broken industrial company that was about 100 years old and uh, pretty much broke. Uh, and over, over the decade, you know, over the 40 some years, 1969, I joined the company. I built it into a multinational $2.5 billion company. The Walton family is our largest shareholder. They own about 10%. And uh, we have built that through acquisitions. So if you think it's hard for your company that began organically and grew, we are 85 acquisitions blended together around the world.